Well, hello, Kareen Graham. I'm so excited to be here with you in the spotlight. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, I'm excited to tell everyone about you and uh, your background and what services that you offer. So why don't you start and, and I'll just have you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up? Where are you from? And where in the world are you now? <laughs> well, I'm not really from anywhere. I'm from everywhere because um, my mother's French. My dad was American and um, they met in France and I was born in London. But, uh, but then I grew up um, all over the US and I grew up all over France. And I, I also grew up in Germany because my dad was military. So traveled all over the place. But um, where we spent the most time in the States and where I got my university degree and, and my heart home in the States is California. Um, but I live in France now and have been here um, with my California husband. <laughs> for um, almost 18 years now we've been in France. So. Wow, and what part of yeah. France are you in? We're in Southern France um, at the base of the Pyrenees Mountains. So um, for anyone who knows France, um, we're about an hour from the city of Toulouse and we're about an hour and a half um, out, an hour and a half north of Barcelona if you go right over the mountains. <laughs> okay. Sounds fabulous. So um, I want to just have you share a little bit about um, your pivotal moment. Like what happened in your life that brought you into animal communication and the energy work, the healing work that you do? Was there like something, maybe the, the light bulb went off or you had one of those where the world just kind of stopped and it made you uh, expand and think, you know, I need to do this. So what was it in your life that brought you to this work that you do? Well, it's interesting because um, I started out as a child really communicating with animals, really being close to them. I'm an only child, so they were my best friends, they were my siblings, and um, as happens to many of us, when, um, when your parents and the people around you and your peers start saying that you're kind of, you're strange, it's a little odd, it's all in your head, you kind of, you know, stop doing that, and uh, and so then I just thought, oh, okay, well, you know, I'll just do whatever, what people are telling me to do and I'll do go the science route. I'll still work with animals, but I'll be, you know, very left brain. And um, I kind of went that whole route for many, many years, you know, over 20 years, I've, you know, have an animal science degree. And then I did dog training and um, genetics and behavior and everything. And um, it's probably at the beginning of COVID, I would think that I all of a sudden, felt this need to uh, do a lot of self-development work and get more in, con in, in connection with the, my, my spiritual side. And I just felt like there was something missing. And so I started doing a lot of that work. And it was during that time, during a meditation, um, actually, I was really deep in meditation. And then all of a sudden, I just got all this heat really, really hot hands. This heat just rushed through my body. And I heard this voice as clear as day, as like if I was talking to you, that said, you need to heal animals with your hands. And I was like, oh my gosh, what does this mean? And it was such a shock to me. And I think any other time in my life, I would have said, oh, that's just crazy. It's in my head. But I had finally gotten to a point in my life where I realized that there was something missing. I had, there was a missing link in all this work and all this knowledge that I had around animals. I always felt like there was something missing. And so I thought, you know what? I need to just follow this. I need to follow my intuition and see where this leads me. And I didn't know what it meant yet. And I just kept looking for signs. And all of a sudden, things about energy medicine and um, healing touch and quantum touch and acupression and all these things related to energy healing and, and just started, I started becoming bombarded with them and I wasn't looking because I didn't know what I was looking for. And I thought, wow, if this isn't a sign from the universe. And, uh, and so I followed it and uh, I started, you know, trying to understand what it meant and how to harness it. And, um, you know, got some mentors who were telling me, you know, you really have a gift and you really need to just run with this and, and don't hold back. And, um, 
you know, even working on my own animals, uh, I realize, oh wow, they're like, they're asking me for it. And I, on a daily basis, I will have whoever needs energy work will come and, and bump me and kind of hit my hands. Like, come on, give me work, mom. <laughs> so it was, it was a, a huge awakening for me that, that took me, I mean, I'm in my fifties now. I mean, it took me 50 years to finally come to the realization of what I was doing when I was a child is what I was meant to be doing all along. And I was just, you know, like blocked from it and um and it's wonderful because i finally feel like i've you know this is my dharma i finally feel like oh yeah of course this is what i was supposed to be doing all along so, it's so amazing. Many, so many people can relate to that just blocking what came naturally to you as a child and what you just were passionate about and finally stepping into that and being like yes this is what i do and yes this is who i am and you know, I am not going to hold back anymore. You know, how much of my lifetime has to go by for me to say, okay, now's my time to do what I really love and what I really want to do. Now's the time. So I applaud you. Yay, you, Kareem. Thank That's you. so cool. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I can relate to so much of your story. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So um, in your in your work, so I, I hear healing and energy and, and animal communication is all part of your work. What's your specialty? Like, what do you offer? Do you have like uh, animal communication and healing services? Like, what could what could someone expect? I mean, I do. My specialization is definitely energy healing for dogs because I have, if you, if I look back at all my training that I've done over the last 30 years, it's all been around dogs. So, um, you know, I've done homeopathy and herbal medicine and essential oils and positive dog training and genetics. And so I have a really complete background specifically around dogs. So I feel that I can then really offer a balanced energy therapy session because I have so many tools in my toolbox specifically for dogs. And I also offer animal communication, but at the same time, even though I'm specializing in dogs, obviously I have worked with, I've worked with horses, I've worked with cows, I've worked with cats, sheep, rabbits, you name it. So I, I do work with other animals. It's just that I, I can bring more tools to the table when it comes to dogs to really give a complete um, session and, and offer many different recommendations depending on what I see and what I feel that that particular dog um, would benefit from in addition to energy therapy. So you kind of combine all of your talents, like you combine your animal communication. I imagine that that comes mm -hmm. in really handy when you're doing your oh. energy work that you can obviously- It's get essential. Yeah. yeah, it's essential because that's what leads me down the right path. Because if not, I'm just guessing kind of like a veterinarian does because I don't have that interaction. The dog or the animal in, in general leads me down the path of what type of energy therapy would be beneficial in this particular instance, because it's always the dog that's going to tell me what it needs. You know, the, the, the owner helps, they are going to give clues, but the dog is going to give me the final piece of that puzzle. I love so, yeah, that. definitely. I love that. I think all veterinarians should be required to be animal communicators. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. I actually have a friend who, who's a veterinarian and she's an, and she's taking animal communication classes right now. And I think it's I amazing. And I was like, I told her, I said, can you just move to France? She's in the States. I said, can't I just move you here and you can just take care, be my personal vet for my dogs. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think it would be amazing. That would be uh, what a beautiful future that would be. I think so. I think it should be a part of their education is to learn animal communication. Yeah. I mean, that's their patient. They should be able to yeah. communicate with their patient, right? Um, okay, so what would be the benefit? Like if I had a dog that was having an issue, give me a scenario of your of a, a common issue that your clients contact you for and how you help resolve whatever it is. Like what is something a session that you do that we could expect if we book with you? Well, I mean, it's hard to pinpoint because every 
every dog is so individual and every issue was so different and the type of modality I would use would be different. But every dog, um, no matter if they have an issue or not, um, is gonna, the owner is going to see an increase in the overall well-being of their dog. And depending on what issue is at hand, they're going to definitely see an improvement in either the health of their dog or the behavioral issue because behavioral issues, um, believe it or not, are um, really, really um, uh, accepting to, to energy therapies. Um, things like fear and panic and anxiety and separation issues. Um, I have one of my own dogs who has had fear since he was a puppy um, related to a traumatic childbirth. And I had tried everything in the past and it wasn't until energy therapy that I was able to finally break those patterns. So, um, so you know, overall, any kind of well-being is going to be better for the dog, and the health or behavioral issue is going to improve. And also, I find that it really helps deepen the bond that owners have with their dog because they they. They see them in a different light. And a lot of times people who come to me are people who've tried everything else. And, you know, they've gone to the, and they've tried all the traditional therapies. And they've sometimes even tried other types of non-traditional modalities. And, and, and they're just at a point of um, frustration or kind of banging their head on the wall going, you know, is this ever going to be better? And, um, and I find that, uh, you know, once they realize that, oh, you know, getting in there and, and communicating with the dog and finding out where they're at and what path we need to go down, it, it automatically deepens their, their bond with them because they learn something about their dog that they didn't know about before. So, yeah. Very cool. And I, I want to add something there. You said mm -hmm. something about experiencing trauma during the birth pro birthing process. Mm -hmm. I also want to add that I've had it come up many, many times in my sessions that if the puppy, kitten, foal, whatever the, the creature is, if the birth mother experienced trauma, yes. that, that um, particular baby in utero experiences the trauma, they would be really, they'd have a hard time describing to you what happened because they were in utero, right? So how do you exactly. explain that? But they absorb the exactly. mother's fear or anxiety or whatever. And this came up time and time again, where the, the client would say, but I've had this animal its whole life. It's never had anything bad happen to it. Well, exactly. It's a whole new spin on it, right? Because you may not have had the birth mother, it is. you know, so something it is. And it's, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm sorry. I cut you off. <laughs> no, but I, I, I heard your story and I'm like, oh, that reminded me of, you know, of yeah. No, well, it's, it's interesting because in my many, in my toolkit and all my past iterations of my life, I was also a dog breeder. And, uh, and because I have this kind of left brain Cartesian side to me, um, and I, and I have a genetics background, um, and physiology and anatomy, it, it makes sense, even if you're not um, right brained or woo woo, because if you're looking at, you're just looking at stress hormones, and that's just cortisol and stress hormones. And if the mother is stressed in any way, and so fear, if she has any kind of fear, if she's put in any kind of physical stress, um, that all gets passed to the fetuses. And, and some are just stronger constitutions. And so it's not like every puppy or every kitten or every foal, you know, well, foal, they usually only have one, but um, it, it's not that every, you know, individual in the litter is going to show those signs. It's just that some are either going to get more of that hormone or they could all get it equally, but some are just have stronger constitutions. And so it doesn't come out unless they're put under extreme stress and then you might see it. But so even that, you know, you don't even have to go right brained at all to really understand where it comes from. Um, and that's something that I like to bring in too, because sometimes when I work with people, it might be the first time that they're trying an alternative modality. And I like that I can then explain it to them with science also, because a lot of times they go, oh, okay, well then that makes sense. And you can kind of make that bridge between a left brain you know, thought and a right brain thought, and, and, and you can see the connection between the two. So I definitely use that a lot. Absolutely, I think some people, feel better or feel more relaxed or like they're grasping it better if there is some kind of 
description or explanation that is more of the scientific. Yeah. So I love that you have that in your background. That is super cool. Yeah. And um, so interesting, right? For everyone who's watching that, you know, if you've had a pet, an animal, a companion animal, and, and you don't know where that fear came from, we could have just answered your question for you right there or whatever the issue yeah, yeah, it doesn't, have, doesn't have to be fear. It could just be some kind of behavioral yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. And You're uh, welcome. Oh, so how does someone find you? Uh, share your website and, and tell us how to get in touch with you. And yeah. you know, we typically do 30 minute sessions, hour sessions, like tell us, you know, how we can find you. Sure. So my website is enlightenedanimal.com, all attached. Um, so www.enlightenedanimal.com. You can also find me on Facebook and on Instagram. And it's the same thing. It's just enlightened animal. Um, so um, it's pretty easy to find me. Um, I answer emails and um, Facebook messages and Instagram messages all the time. I'm always checking. So I'm very reactive on that end. Um, and uh I, I offer, right, currently offer, uh, my energy sessions are always an hour because it does take a long time. I mean, even if I'm doing just a really basic like chakra balancing, that's gonna take me at least 45 minutes to get through the animal. And that's just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. So I my sessions are an hour for energy healing. And I do offer a special for um, booking three at a time because I've found that a lot of times one session alone, we've we've started to peel back the onion, but there's always more layers. And if you really want to see significant change over the long term, I found that three sessions are ideal. And depending on the issue, sometimes they're close together or sometimes they're really spaced apart. It really depends on what's going on with the animal. And I do also offer 30-minute um, animal communication sessions also on the website for someone who just wants um, animal communication and or wants to get to know me and doesn't want to commit to a bigger um, session, uh, you know, which obviously the energy healing because they're longer, they're more expensive than the animal communication. Um, so if someone wants to get to know me, yeah, they can do that as well. And um, on your sessions, um, these are, are they done over the phone or how do you do your session? How do you conduct your sessions? So, um, so I'm based in France, <laughs> but I'm completely bilingual. I speak, obviously speak English. <laughs> I also speak perfect French because my mother um, is French. So I've spoken both languages since birth. So I can, I conduct um, my sessions in both languages and um, I do them remotely. Most of the time, I'd say 95% of my sessions are done remotely. Obviously, if you live in the Toulouse region in France, I'm more than happy to meet you in person. But most of my clients are, even my French clients, most of them are not close. So um, with energy uh, healing, um, similar to animal communication, um, you can do it anywhere. Um, energy is universal and, and um, travels, uh, distance and time, it's not a problem. Um, there's only a few tiny, you know, few, like two modalities that I use that have to be done in person, but I very rarely use those anyways. So um, it's it's not a problem. I, I do everything by okay. Zoom. Um, energy healing, I don't do by, I with energy healing, because I'm working really with the dog, um, I don't do a Zoom call. What I do is a Zoom call afterwards to discuss where I felt blockages, what needs to be worked on, what I felt we were, I don't actually do that live. Um, animal communication, I do do live um, on Zoom, but okay. um, energy healing, because I'm in my bubble with a dog, I'm not gonna have someone sit on hold for an hour while I'm working on their dog. So I just make a, I just set up like a 15 minute call with them afterwards to go over what I find. And everything I do also comes with a transcript. So if it's a communication or an energy healing, all my notes get transcribed and they get that um, in, in an email as well to be able to go back and, and overview, or if they wanna take it to their vet or another um, practitioner, uh, then they have everything. They don't have to recall what we talked about. So super cool. So um, thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. And I just thank think you. it's fantastic that you are fluent and speak uh, um, fluently in French. And that's, that's so unique. Do you think you could close out by 
saying something in, in French for all of us. We we won't know what you say, but share something in well, French. Well, in case you never know maybe you have some french listeners out there a lot of french uh, a lot of french people actually do go and listen to they they speak a lot of them speak really good english and um follow a lot of english speaking pages because they're not finding what they want in french so um so i guess i'll say um si vous êtes français vous vous habitez en france n'hésitez pas de venir voir mon site web parce que c'est bilingue donc il y a l'option en anglais et l'option en français donc vous pouvez tout re recevoir en français tout lire en français euh, et je serai ravie de parler avec vous un peu plus pour, euh, sur euh, la guérison énergétique et la communication animale merci <rire> wow that was so cool <rire> <rire> I just told people that if they're French and they are interested in my services that my website is completely bilingual and they can click on the French icon and find all the services in French and I'd be more than happy to talk to them more about it. That was so cool. Thank you so much, Kareem. And it has been a pleasure talking to you today. And if you're interested you. in booking a session, I encourage you to go to Kareem's website again. It's the, uh, it's enlightened animal singular right yes. animal and yes. animal dot com and her name is kareem graham and thank you so much for being with me today in the spotlight thank you for having me it was a pleasure <laughs>